Moin Moin und herzlich willkommen zum zweiten Teil Kirby Space Program 2. Ja, heute gucken wir uns den äh, zweiten Teil des Tutorials an. Und zwar, der heißt Boden verfehlen. Missing the ground. If you want to visit space for more than a couple of minutes, you'll need to get to orbit. An object is in orbit when it's moving sideways so quickly that even as gravity causes it to fall, it keeps missing the ground. As long as that object isn't slowed down by anything, it follows the same path every time it goes around the body it's orbiting. Forever. If that object is a Kerbal, it is recommended that they bring lots of snacks. So since your goal is to move horizontally at a high speed, why not launch sideways? On Kerbin, the atmosphere is like a thick soup. You waste a lot of fuel trying to fly through it horizontally. By launching vertically, you cut through the thickest part of the atmosphere as quick as possible. Most orbital rockets begin tilting toward the horizon soon after they leave the launch pad. This maneuver, called a gravity turn, uses the planet's gravity to turn the ship and reduces the amount of fuel needed to achieve a stable orbit. When launching near the equator, your gravity turns should point toward the east since your vehicle gets a free boost from the planet's rotation. Thanks, planet. Once a vehicle is moving quickly enough that its arc will take it above the atmosphere, it shuts down its engines and coasts to space. Once it nears the top of that arc, the vehicle needs to fire its engines a second time to keep itself from falling back down to the planet. Doing this turns that arc into a nice big circle. Congratulations! You've missed the ground. Oh. Jetzt wissen wir schon mal, dass es sich auf jeden Fall darum handelt, wie man einen Orbit aufbaut oder in den Orbit um den Planeten gelangt. Ähm, ja, machen wir weiter, ne? a rocket it's often easiest to work top to bottom tailoring each stage to carry the weight of everything above it to give you a head start i've already placed an upper stage perfect for maneuvering in the vacuum of space it could use another more powerful stage to push it up to space from kerbin surface let's turn this vehicle into a multi-stage rocket ah yeah ja. machen wir das doch mal Anytime we intend to drop an empty stage after using all of its fuel, we connect it to the stage above it using a decoupler. A decoupler contains explosive bolts that, when activated by a staging action, eject the attached stage away from the rest of the vehicle. Well, my decoupler. On. Add that decoupler to the bottom of your rocket. We need to attach a larger, more powerful lower stage to the bottom of your rocket. To keep things simple, I've whipped up a new lower stage in another workspace. You can bring saved vehicles and other sub-assemblies into an in-progress workspace by... Out in the real world, this list would show all of your saved workspaces. Here in the simulator, I'm only showing you... Now that the lower stage has been merged into your current workspace, you can see it next to the upper stage. Select the lower stage and connect it to the decoupler beneath the upper stage to create a single two-stage rocket. Perfect! Merging is a very powerful tool. Anytime you want to reuse a particular booster, lander, or other element from an existing rocket, merging saves you the hassle of making the same thing over and over. Ja, das stimmt. Wenn man Teile speichert, spart man sich Arbeit. Vor allem, wenn man Teile speichert, die auch schon getestet sind, dass sie funktionieren. Space Rockets sometimes need an extra boost. In a rare case of rocket scientists naming something well, these additional rocket engines are called boosters. Boosters are attached to the sides of a vehicle to keep them out of the way of the main engines. Solid fuel rockets make great boosters. They produce a very high thrust for a short time. Let's attach some boosters to the sides of your vehicle. Okay, booster. 
We'll start by attaching four radial decouplers that will eject the spent boosters when they're empty. To make sure that these decouplers are... Great! Now when you place a part on one side of your rocket, three more evenly spaced duplicates will appear around the rocket. Go ahead and add four radial decouplers. Okay, add the decoupler. Now attach it as shown. Sollen wir wahrscheinlich hier anbringen. Perfect. Now you've got four radial decouplers exactly where they need to be. Uh -huh. Let's attach those solid fuel boosters. Und einen kleinen Since Booster dran. Wenn du in 4X-Symmetry-Mode bist, einfach attach this Booster to one of the decouplers you just placed. That will attach copies of that Booster to the remaining decouplers. Great job! You've finished your orbital rocket. You can symmetrically place up to eight parts at once. A feat that could until now only be achieved by certain sea creatures. Okay. Okay. Before you launch a rocket, you need to plan the order of your staging events. Nobody wants to start out their flight by popping their parachute, right? Most parts that can be staged are automatically assigned to stages. Their activation order can be seen in the staging stack. You can change when staging events occur by moving them between stages. You can also add, remove, and reorder stages. Best of all, you can do this in both the VAB and in flight. Okay. The staging order begins at the bottom of the staging stack. You want your boosters and main engine to fire together for more. Okay, das wird zusammengezündet werden. Your solid fuel boosters burn very hard and very fast, so they will run out of fuel first. Now move all four radial decouplers from stage four to your new stage two. Okay. All done. Your remaining stages are set up so that stage four will activate your orbital stages engine. Stage five will detach the orbital stages fuel tank when it's empty. And stage six will deploy your landing parachute. Jo. Thanks to you, this rocket is ready to fly. Dann wollen wir noch mal testen den Hobel hier. All right, we're ready to light this candle. In this flight, you're going all the way to orbit. I'll walk you through the process of launching, executing a gravity turn to get moving sideways, coasting to orbital altitude, and doing a final burn at the top of your arc to establish a stable orbit. Before we begin, let's talk about the nav ball. The nav ball shows your vehicle's orientation relative to the horizon. The blue half of the ball represents the sky, and the brown half represents the ground. The level indicator at the center shows your vehicle's orientation. When you turn, the ball turns. When you roll, the ball rolls. Assuming you want your rocket pointed at the sky, you'll want to see lots of blue on the nav ball. If you get confused, remember this rhyme. If the nav ball's brown, you're going down. <laughs> also, is the nav ball brown, it's runter. You want all your engines at maximum thrust, which means you need to set your throttle at 100%. Your solid fuel boosters are way ahead of you on this. They have no setting other than full throttle, and they can't be shut off. Wir müssen auf 100% stellen. Once you hit the go button, they'll go full tilt until they run out of fuel. Stiff. Your fuel levels are visible within the staging stack. Right now, you can see that your main engine and four boosters are all topped off and ready to rumble. It's time to go. At the start, all you need to do is fly straight up. I'll check back in with you once those boosters are empty. Good luck. Okay. Yes. Alter. Booster sind gleich leer. All right, solid fuel boosters are empty. Dann schmeißen wir die mal ab. It's time to start your gravity turn. A gravity turn uses the pull of the planet's gravity to help bend your vertical ascent into a horizontal arc. It's the first step to entering orbit. 
For our first flight to orbit, we're going to start our gravity turn up to where the air is thin, at an altitude of around 10,000 meters. To show you where to aim your rocket, I've placed a target marker on your nav ball. First, we need to get to 10,000 meters. So, erstmal auf 10,000 hochgehen, okay. You're going to yaw towards the east so that the target marker is in the center of the nav ball. Your vessel and nav ball should look like this example video if you're performing the gravity turn correctly. Okay. Los, dreh dich, du blöde Rakete. Your current stage's fuel is empty. Let's drop it and activate your deep space engine. Great job! Your rocket is on its way to orbit. As you gain experience, you can make your gravity turns more efficient by starting to tilt your rocket soon after liftoff. Adjusting course with a series of small corrections instead of one big one will leave you with a lot more fuel when you get to orbit. Turning immediately after launch requires a very Und brennt eigentlich das Treibtriebwerk nicht. Keeping the pointy end up, you can try the simplified wait and turn method we use today. Wollte schon sagen. Okay. Machen wir weiter. Right now, we're on a ballistic trajectory. If no further adjustments are made, your rocket will eventually fall back down to the ground. Our objective is to turn this arc into an orbit. The process of turning your trajectory into a circular orbit is called circularization. Partial credit to the rocket people on that one. It does have the word circle in it, but it's really hard to say. Okay, also weiter. When planning and executing orbital maneuvers, you'll want to switch to map view, where you can see every part of your current trajectory. Gehen wir einmal auf die Map. Passing through your vehicle is its current trajectory, the path your rocket will follow if you don't touch the controls anymore. Our goal is to make that arc into a circular orbit. After you've coasted nearly to the top of this arc, you're going to point forward and then you're going to ignite your engine. If you time this burn right, you'll never quite get to the top of the arc, as it'll keep widening in front of you until it wraps all the way around the planet. Okay, also wir müssen den Bogen erweitern, bis er einmal rumgeht und nicht mehr zurück auf den Planeten zeigt. Weil wir sehen ja hier, sieht nicht gut aus. Let's break that down a little more. The top of your arc has a helpful tag in map view. It's called the apoapsis, abbreviated as AP. You're going to max out your throttle before you pass this point. Okay. We're paused at just before the apoapsis. We want to go faster in the... You're all lined up and ready to go. The next step is to go max throttle. So, wir sollen das jetzt, wir sind noch gar nicht an der Abwurfabsicht und sollen jetzt schon Gas geben, okay. Look closely at where your trajectory meets the ground, you'll see it moving toward the horizon. Wir rechtsläufig ist eingestellt, dann holen wir mal. Once your trajectory reaches all the way around the planet, you'll see another marker on your orbit. This is the periapsis or PE, the lowest point in your orbit. It'll always live on the opposite side of your orbit from the apoapsis. Oh, my so drauf. By burning prograde near your apoapsis, you increase the altitude of your periapsis, the lowest point on your orbit. Also merken, AP ist der höchste Punkt, PE der niedrigste. Here's the most important thing to remember about setting up an orbit above an atmosphere. Your periapsis must be higher than the atmosphere, or your rocket will start to slow down every time it dips. 
Okay, you're... You did it! You're in orbit! This is when I'd usually tell you to look under your seat in the simulator, where you'd find a delicious celebratory treat. Sadly, since the vending machine in the astrodynamics lab broke down, it has gotten very difficult to hide snacks anywhere at KSC. Feel free to take a moment to admire your first orbit. In a way, you've given yourself a mind snack, which is way better than the edible kind anyway. Right? Right? So, wir haben jetzt hier eine Höhe an der Ab... Wenn er mir das mal anzeigt, da... 189 Kilometer und hier haben wir 80 Kilometer. Gut, ist jetzt ein bisschen ungleich. Sollte man vielleicht noch ausgleichen, aber es ist jetzt fürs Tutorial, glaube ich, scheißegal. Genau, wir haben gelernt, wie man die Kartenansicht öffnet, wie man den Orbit bildet. Das war's schon. Oha. Okay, das war schon der zweite Teil des äh, Tutorials. Als nächstes kommt dann noch äh, Umlaufbahnen sind komisch und Orbitaltransfer. Ich glaube, das wird dann ein Video, die Sachen zusammen. Ähm, ja. Dann bleibt mir nur zu sagen, danke, dass ihr da wart. Wenn es euch gefallen hat, gerne Daumen nach oben da lassen. Ansonsten würde ich mich freuen, wenn ihr beim nächsten Mal wieder einschaltet. Bis dahin wünsche ich noch einen schönen Tag und ciao, ciao.